On a junkyard supercharged LS, let's add an intercooler. All aluminum 5.3. M90 blower. Spin that baby up. Nothing like junkyard boost. Wait, what? Even junkyard boost needs an intercooler. Super rigid adapter plate. Pop that blower back on. Got the big throttle body. It's ready to rock. Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Holder, and welcome to the channel. I like to jump in every once in a while, you know, surprise everybody. But today we're taking a look at intercooling. What happens if you make a new world record with your M90 supercharger and make over 600 horsepower? But here's the thing. That thing doesn't have an intercooler. That's right. It's just a blower on top of a high ram. What's missing? Well, lucky for us, the guys at Tick Performance make an intercooler that sandwiches right in between the high ram and in this case, our Super Richie plate with the M90 supercharger. What is the intercooler gonna do? Is it gonna add power? Is it gonna lose power? Is it gonna lower the charge temperature? Is it gonna heat up the charge set for some reason? Let's jump right in, find out what the intercooler did and check it out. Okay, let's go out and make a pull with the Holly High Ram. Whoa. Yeah, camera shake. We had camera shake. Speed wobbles. Set our camera up here. And voila. Now it's time for the blower. So let's take the high ram lid off and then we'll replace it with the M90. Turn off with our adapter plate. For this setup on the 5.3, we've actually done a bunch of porting inside there. Guys at Mahovitz, thanks John and Gary for doing the machining in there. And then JT Fab, uh, Jason welded this flange on here. That's so I can put this on there. So this is the 92 millimeter throttle body, but you can see we have an adapter. And then what I need to do is put a coupler from this side over this side, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, let's get the intercooler installed. First thing we need to do is obviously take the blower off. Then we're gonna sandwich the intercooler between the high ram and the blower. But first, let's pull the blower. Fling. Super rich drive by wire in the house, patent pending. All right, team tick. Let's see what makes them tick. Look at that. 
<laughs> the intercooler and Swedish fish. That's awesome. Let's get this baby installed up on here. After removal of the Eaton supercharger, we installed the Tick Performance Air to Water Intercooler. The Air to Water Intercooler was originally designed to be sandwiched between the Holly High Ram Lower and the Holly High Ram Upper. This would present a problem on our combination. The flat Super Richie adapter plate, combined with the fact that the intercooler core actually stood up higher than the mounting flange, required use of a spacer. But even with the spacer and the flat plate, that just put the plate too close to the core. There wasn't enough room for airflow to come out of the blower and utilize the entire core. Despite this issue, we hooked up the intercooler lines to give it a try. Then installed the M90 supercharger. This temperature probe was used to measure the discharge temperature coming out of the M90 supercharger, both before and after installation of the intercooler. All right, guys, you can see we have the tick intercooler in place, air to water, we got our lines all hooked up, the blower is on, everything's working. So let's jump into the control room, start this baby up, and see how much power we have. Okay, guys, now it's time to look at the power output offered by the intercooler on the M90 supercharger. But before I do that, we need to go through really quickly what the test motor was and stuff for guys that have not watched the first video where we made over 600 horsepower by putting the M90 supercharger on our 5.3 liter. But And the reason that we it did make that much power or a big part of that was not so much the blower, but actually the test motor that we were putting it on because it was a pretty healthy thing to begin with. So it was a 5.3 liter L33, all stock bottom end, no ring gap, came from the wrecking yard it was the all aluminum version it had we had replaced the 799 heads with trick flow 220 no longer as cast heads they had been milled to add compression they also have been f uh, further ported by the guys at brian tooley racing we put a big camshaft in this thing it was a brian tooley racing stage 4 ls3 camshaft i'll go ahead and pop the the specs up here so pretty healthy camshaft for a 5.3 liter we ran it on this test with the Holly High Ram upper and lower into or the lower manifold and then the lid and 105 millimeter throttle body. We had 80 pound injectors on it. We ran it with the 85. We had inch and seven eighths headers, long tube headers on this thing. And that's why this thing makes so much power because we did a lot of work to get it to make a lot of NA power. That was originally the goal. And then run in this manner, as you saw, we, we, sh we showed you the dyno runs, made 545 horsepower and 428 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we added the Eaton supercharger. We added the Eaton M90 supercharger. That supercharger had been modified, at least on the inlet side, to improve the flow so that we could put um, a 92 millimeter fast throttle body on there. We did some machining and welded, welded on a, a standoff, a three and a half inch standoff, so that we could improve the flow into it. It hasn't yet been sent to the guys from Jokers who are going to do further porting on it. We'll do additional testing to try to further improve the flow rate of the M90. But right now, it just had an inlet side. It had the 2.6 inch blower pulley from the guys at ZZP, so we're spinning it fairly fast, 18,700 RPM at our self-imposed peak of 66 or 6,700 RPM. So it made good power. It made 640 four horsepower and 536 foot pounds of torque and did that producing about seven pounds of boost at least it had seven pounds of boost at the load in at 3500 and then that boost fell off down to 5.6 pounds out at the horsepower peak so here's what happened i'm going to go ahead and get rid of our na combination here's what happened when we added the tick performance uh, air to water intercooler as you saw from the video we, we installed that and sandwiched it between uh, the adapter plate and ran the m90 on it in the same con same configuration all we did was put a longer belt on it because we raised the blower up and it made more power it made uh made 615 horsepower so peak power was up a little bit peak torque was up a little bit as well 547 foot pounds but this only came actually after we added a degree of timing it's, it's interesting we're running e85 it was intercooled 
But when we added the timing on the non-intercooler version, it didn't seem to respond to it. And it did respond to it after we added the intercooler. But we have a lot to talk about on this intercooler because I don't think we gave this intercooler a fair shake. We know that this intercooler will support way over 1,000 horsepower. We're only making uh, 600 or a little over 600 here. And the reason for that, and we went over this a little bit in the video, is that the opening of the, the discharge opening of the supercharger Basically, we're only flowing through a very, very small part of the intercooler core. And we saw that because actually on this, when we installed the intercooler, boost pressure dropped on this thing, which it shouldn't do given this, given this amount of airflow and power output. It dropped by about a pound and a half down to a peak of 4.1 pounds out at the top and right at 5.9 pounds at the load end. Again, it has a, it has a, uh, dropping boost curve. And again, the reason for that is because the spacer that we use, to get the plate up above the intercooler core, you're only talking about like a half inch or something above the core. There just isn't room to use all of the core. So we're asking all of that flow to flow through basically a third or so of the intercooler core. So it's not surprising that it'd be more restrictive because we're not using the whole core, but this thing did drop the temperature dramatically. It dropped it from 162 degrees down to 90 degrees. So the intercooler, at least a small portion of the intercooler that we were using, was actually doing its job. The temperature dropped dramatically by, by over 70 degrees, and that's a pretty good change from only having 162 to begin with. So we had, you know, we had low boost, we weren't using the whole intercooler, and still it was kind of fighting its way through this test. What we're going to have to do is we'll have to raise the intercooler up or, or raise the blower up away from the intercooler to get some volume in there so that the air can go in and use basically all of the available core and we'll run that test next time so I'll be able to show you exactly what's going on. So I'm happy that we got the intercooler on. I think we're gonna be able to make a lot more power with it once we get that part of it situated. And then after we get the blower back from the guys at Jokers, even more M90 power. Thanks for watching, I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff and I'll keep testing. But wait, there's more, I forgot. We have a bonus test, the bubbler test. So let's check that out. Okay, I almost forgot. Here's a test that I told a guy that I would do, uh, one of the viewers on the live feed. Uh, it's called the bubbler test. And what it is apparently is some of these blower kits uh, for Roush, for the 4.6 Mustangs, maybe others, basically have a little drain that they allow the oil that builds up at the bottom of the intake manifold to come out, but it's also kind of a boost leak. So uh, they said, well, can you test it? Can you pull a 3 8 pipe plug out of the intake manifold, which lucky for me, the Holly High Ram has exactly that, and find out how much boost is leaking out of there from these bubblers. So here is your bubbler test. <laughs> so this is our combination with the uh, Tick air to water intercooler. And here's what happened when we pulled the, did our bubbler test. We pulled our three inch pipe plug out, boost dropped quite a bit. It dropped down from 5.9 pounds at the beginning to four pounds, so it dropped almost two pounds of boost and then ended up at the top, actually a little bit less. It went from 4.1 pounds down to three pounds. So the drop was more substantial down low than it was up top. We went from, uh, you know, 125, it dropped from 126 kPa down to 119 kPa during the run, and the power output dropped dramatically. It dropped from 415 horsepower to 579 horsepower. Torque was down from 447, uh, 547 foot-pounds down to 505 foot-pounds. So if you have one of these bubblers, and it's and it's sized like this 3H, 3H uh, uh, pipe plug, that I pulled out of this intake manifold and you have that much boost leaking out, you have a big change in power. So I would try to fix that if I were you. Now we can say, I'm Richard Holder, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff and I'll keep testing.